guys welcome this is a general reading for the collective of scorpio sun moon rising venus it's not date or time specific so whenever you come upon it if it speaks to you it could be your message at that time do keep in mind it's a general reading not a private reading so it may not resonate for everyone welcome cross watchers and for those of you who are brand new to the channel happy to have you here um, if you're interested in a private reading, I do offer them. There is a link in the description box below every video that will take you to that information. I am pulling from Cosmic Journey to activate the reading. You get card 25. Of course, two and five is seven, so I love the spirituality. And you get the Phoenix rises into joyful abundance. So Scorpio is associated with the Phoenix. Um, eighth house themes of death and rebirth of growth, change, and transformation. So there you have some pretty powerful confirmation. This is your reading. You can um, rise into joyful abundance. And while we're talking about joyful abundance, as I record this, Jupiter has just moved into the sign of Gemini. Gemini is a sign of joyfulness. Um, it's kind of chitty chatty, lighthearted, lots of ideas going back and forth, very communicative. Um, and Jupiter is the planet of expansion and abundance. So there you have it. Uh, we also have Venus in Gemini now. We're in Gemini season, so lots of energy building up. You may want to check your natal chart for where Gemini lands in your chart, meaning what houses, okay? Um, that'll give you a clue about your joyful abundance. All right, here we go. I'm going to pull my twin flame soulmate spread. I'll give you my general impressions. We'll get details from the clarifiers. Here we go. Eight of cups. So this is part, this is part and parcel of the journey of this, um, connection. The present energy of the connection is about the eight of cups. I feel like it may be a, do I stay or do I go? kind of a proposition yes um right so we're we're <laughs> evaluating things making decisions before and sort of looking before we leap here okay in any direction your present experience of the connection is the nine of wands and to me that's about ugh, exhaustion feeling like you're reaching a breaking point. But the nine of wands kind of says you're so close. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit just yet. Persevere a little bit more. I know it's stressful. I know it's exhausting, um, but keep pushing forward. So you're reaching a breaking point. The 10 of wands is it's done, right? Whew. Um, but we're not quite there yet. Your person is coming through with queen of swords energy. So it feels to me like this is someone who is, um, on a mission for getting to the truth of something, right? Maybe trying to see something clearly or understand something, um, that is escaping their, their understanding at this point. Queen of Swords, truth seeker, truth teller. And it feels to me like this person is sort of at that point where they're just trying to get at some form of clarity or truth. In your karmic challenge, Three of Swords, right? This is painful and it feels like this is something, when I say karmic challenge, kar the karmic energy feels like it comes back around and smacks us upside the head. And it feels like you might keep, you might be exhausted and frustrated that you keep landing in, in a position where your, fe your feelings get hurt or where there's some sort of heartache. Your person's karmic challenge, nine of swords, overthinking things, worry, um, preoccupation with something. Notice for this person, they have all this swords energy. You could be dealing with an air sign, but it could also be that this person doesn't live in the realm of their feelings much, that everything is processed on a mental level and it's driving them a little buggy. And so sometimes a queen of swords in reverse energy can be suspicious. She cannot be very trusting. She can be very cutting, right? So if the karmic challenge is this, uh, something that runs on a loop in this person's head and preoccupies most of their thoughts and what they're thinking about is you know what's the truth of the situation the obvious um conclusion here is that they don't take things on faith so the opportunity is to focus and make decisions based on how you feel about each other 
not what's going on up here. How do you feel? Two of Cups. The um, Divine Guidance is the full card. So the full is about a leap into the unknown and taking a leap for love on faith. But the full card is also a card of assessing the risks of the look before you leap. So I'm going to go with that for now. We'll see what the clarifiers have for you. Eight of Cups is where we begin. Four of Pentacles, Page of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. Um, so... Clearly some kind of trouble in paradise, but it feels to me like it's hard to break through and feel like, well, is this something we can work on? Is this something where we can, you know, like uh, both be sincere in our desire to focus on the issues or the problems, come up with creative solutions to a problem is the eight of pentacles. But there's some energy here that's holding back. Um, and because this part of the spread is about the two of you together, it feels like you may both be holding your cards pretty close to the vest. So I'm seeing a situation where um, it's not clear whether you can work on this because it's not clear whether or not you're both sincerely invested in that. So let's go ahead and see the Nine of Wands. Your, karm, your um, present energy of this, your present experience of the connection. Jeez. There's the fool, the hanged man, the magician. Yeah, you're all in knots here. The fool tells you to do one thing. The hanged man's like, no, pull back, don't leap. Look before you leap. Um, the, 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 the hanged man can also be a bit of surrender, surrendering to the situation. So with the magician underneath, there is some form of, well, what is it I, wa I, I want here? What am I trying to manifest? And should it be this hard? Should it be this exhausting? Should it be this, this full of struggle? Um, and when do I get to just kind of come down and let loose and break free of something that has me... Um, feeling like I can't go much further. So I do feel that there's one part of you here that wants to just break free of it all, but then there's some inner spiritual wisdom that's saying, whoa, 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 just press pause. So let's see your person with the Queen of Swords. Wow. I feel like this person does not, there's something they are not believing when it comes to you. There's, there's, you know, justice and we have the beautiful energy of the divine feminine, queen of swords. Uh, queen of swords is Libra. The justice card is Libra. Libra is about diplomacy, about balance and harmony, uh, but it is, um, the ruler of the seventh house of relationships. And here we have um, Venus, which rules Libra. So underneath with the wheel of fortune, it just feels like this person is like, uh, this is not my fate or destiny here. There, there's something that they're questioning. They're questioning something. And I feel like there's um, something that they're not taking at face value. They're making a judgment about it. I'm going to stick a pin in that. All right, let's look at the Three of Swords in your karmic challenge. Seven of Pentacles. The world, Nine of Wands again. Yeah, your karmic challenge is you wait and you wait and you persevere and you persevere and you still get clobbered. And it's running on repeat. The world is Saturn. Saturn's a great teacher in the Lord of Karma. And sometimes with the world card, we're learning the same lesson over and over and over and over. And for you, it happens to be a pretty painful one. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. 
which is interesting because then that would suggest that maybe like the nine of wands can be pretty painful. The nine of wands can leave us in some measure of agony. And it may be that the lesson that you need to learn is that, it, it, that love shouldn't hurt this much. It shouldn't be this painful for this long. Um, and when I say that, please understand, because I know I'll get crucified in the comments. Please understand, do we have falling, you know, falling out? Does that hurt? Sure. Do we have a misunderstanding and feelings get hurt? Sure. That is not what I'm talking about. Relationships are rife with, you know, ups and downs and insults to our integrity. And, you know, I mean, sometimes we get hurt just by being human beings. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that is so painful as to be a way of life. That's not love. So let's see the nine of swords, meaning that's the lesson you need to learn through this relationship is that prolonged pain and suffering is not love. Nine of swords, emperor, nine of cups, king of cups. King of cups is associated with Scorpio. Oh, I feel this person spends a lot of time um, trying to cloak the, the, the truth of the depth of their feelings in something a lot less emotional. The Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment, emotional self-satisfaction. Notice he's like a barkeep here. You know, he's kind of like, come on in. It's the cheers mentality, um, right? Where everyone knows your name, it's cool. No, no big deal. But they're real. that's not the truth of the situation. That's not the truth of the situation. The truth of the situation is their karmic challenge is they overthink things so much and have such a tight grip. Um, there's control issues here. I feel like this emperor coming through reversed. Uh, normally the emperor is the highest and best of all four kings, but in his reverse, he's the lower vibration, right? So if you think of the lower vibration of the king of wands, the unavailable lover, the lower vibration of a king of cups is a lack of emotional maturity. The lower vibration of the king of swords is cool, distant, aloof, rejecting, right? Non-communicative, not great intentions. You see where I'm going. The, uh, the, the king of pentacles reversed, undependable, so we can also have this, this emperor coming through as an over-controlling, almost to the point of tyrannical um, energy. And what's happening here is they're paying the price for that over-control, right? If they would just speak to the truth of their, and the depth of their feelings, um, they wouldn't spend so much time overanalyzing and being obsessed adjacent. The nine of swords can be obsession. And I'm feeling a bit of that now because I'm looking at how they're judging you, right? They're not seeing it as a blessing. They're seeing this, um, this energy that's coming through here is not trusting um, and is judging. Mm. So let's look at the opportunity, two of cups. Knight of swords, five of pentacles, lovers. The lovers is a card of choice, as is the two of cups. So the opportunity here is to clear the air, make sure you understand and are uh, being understood. Um, I feel there's some something here that's not, yeah, there's like some um, chink in the armor. There's something here that is um, not on solid ground. That five of pentacles can be a sense of some form of rejection or abandonment or something that isn't very stable. It can be 
um, feeling devalued or questioning your own worth and value. So we got to talk about the elephant in the room and then choose from our hearts of our own free will what we want this to look like. So I'm seeing a potential here to clear up anything that leaves either of you feeling like you've been forsaken, um, right? And making the choice to do so. Two of Cups and the Lovers. Now the opportunity is the Fool. Let's see what Spirit has to say. The Fool and the Seven of Swords, not great energy. Um, and the Ten of Wands, let it go. Yeah. Let it go. I do feel it's like, um, and when I see the Seven of Swords and the Page of Wands, that also has a little player theme to it. So I, I feel like you're coming to a point where some of the advice, the divine guidance here is, yeah, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like it's a duck, it's a duck. Let it go keep moving um, so I am definitely speaking to um, those of you here maybe just one of you here who has really given it your all um, and you still keep getting clobbered emotionally right hurt feelings of rejection right that's why what 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 you're manifesting here is like well, I'm just going to press pause and I'm really at the end of my ropes. Do I take the leap of faith or do, or are the risks too plenty? And so what I'm seeing is the risks are too plenty. That's the divine guidance. Um, I, I do feel like there could be some avoidant energy here of making that decision, right? Because the two of cups with the lover's card underneath, can you clear the air? Can you... Um, make sure that there are no, no misunderstandings between you first. Sure, you can do that. But mm, if you're dealing with somebody who isn't going to believe you, who doesn't trust what you say, who judges everything very harshly, um, yeah, it's difficult. This is not an easy reading, but I, I pull the cards, I read the cards. And it feels to me like um, whoever this person is, they do feel things way deeper um, than they're willing to admit. And as a result, they kind of over try to over control the whole situation. Emperor in reverse. And they try to play everything off like, no big deal. Everything's good here. And that's not the truth of the situation. Everything isn't good here. So what I want to do is um, give you the astrology that shows up here, just in case that helps confirm things for you. Um, I am going to take it to the extended because I want to dig a little deeper with our King of Cups. I really want to see the, what, what they're processing that you're not aware of. What, you know, how do they see you at this moment or think about you or even feel about you? Their intentions. I'm going to get a card from behind the scenes, what you can't see that you don't know, that you might want to, and then their message to you. What do they want you to know? Like unfiltered. So that's what we're going to look at in the extended, and the links to that are in the description box below. Um, here, also, if the readings are helpful, or if they, um, and maybe they touch a nerve, and they don't feel great, but it's kind of like confirmational, so, uh, you know, in any way, shape, or form that this reading has been helpful and you haven't already, please subscribe below, okay? That would be helpful for me to continue to bring you these messages. So here we go. Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. We have the Fool is out twice. That is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius. Hanged Man is Neptune, which rules Pisces. The Magician is Mercury, which rules Virgo and Gemini. We have... Um, the Queen of Swords, Libra. Empress is Venus, Taurus, and Libra. We have um, Justice is Libra, okay? <laughs> and the Wheel of Fortune is Jupiter, um, which rules Sagittarius. 
the world card is Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. The Emperor here is associated with Aries, King of Cups is Scorpio. We have the um, Knight of Swords is Gemini, as is the Lover's card. So a lot of this decision-making coming down right now in Gemini season for you. And then we close out with the Page of Wands, which is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So yeah, um, a phoenix r rises into joyful abundance. Sounds to me like you're assessing the risk and you will soon be liberated from all of this, but I'm gonna take it to the extended if you want a sneak peek into what's going on behind the scenes with this person. Thanks for joining me, bye for now.